Okay, so this tutorial is going to go through taking your geometry in, from Rhino into Studio Max so that we can start to do some uh, basic rendering here. Okay, so we have the building model that I provided to you guys in here, so we can zoom in and out. Uh, we can see that I've turned on all the layers. I'm going to go ahead and expand this up so you guys can see what's all in here. Um, so in here you can expand this out and you can see that all these guys are in here selected. We're going to want to unlock all those layers so we can get to them. Uh, we have our partition wall with all these guys that we're using to start to visualize or locate stuff we have off. So you don't need the analysis geometry or the location stuff. We have our partition wall, uh, all, this guy, all these guys in here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lock that just so I can show you guys how uh, some of the importing features work in Studio Max. Um, but what, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take and select all this stuff. Uh, all the unlocked geometry that we're going to have in our renderings, and we're going to go ahead and export that. We're going to export that as an AutoCAD DXF. So we have a render model here. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and hit save. And we'll replace it. Um, now what's going to pop up is going to it's going to look some export scheme as default. And you do not, I repeat, do not want to export as a default scheme because it's going to not represent the nerve NURBS components of this properly. Um, and so we'll go ahead and we want to edit the schemes here. And you're going to create a new scheme. I'm getting new, and we'll, you can title this uh, rendering, what I had on. Um, but you can say uh, for Studio Max, 3D Max. Let's go 3D Max. Okay, so this is what we're going to call the scheme. And uh, the key thing in here that you want to change is that export surfaces instead of as curves you want to actually export those as meshes now, and that's really 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 important that you guys understand that because if um, otherwise what we'll get in there we'll be able to see all of the curves that make this stuff up and it'll basically turn everything into a wireframe um, and you won't have any surfaces to actually render out okay so we'll go ahead and then save that and then we hit close and it'll pull up our scheme here and we'll go ahead and hit okay and then uh, it's going to ask us to mesh. There's nothing that I've put in here that's particularly complex, and I've actually already meshed the um, the undulating wall, uh, or sorry, the serpentine wall component of this. And so that as this thing undulates, then we'll be able to um, basically take that in. So we have everything we need, with the exception of this guy right here, and I'll, I'm leaving that out on purpose. Okay. So let's go ahead and generate the mesh, and with a little uh, magic here, we'll be able to pop over into Studio Max here momentarily. Alright. Okay, so now it's has it done, so we can go ahead and hop over to uh, Studio Max. Now I'm just going to We'll do a save out of the centers real quick. So. so what you're going to do is you're going to go and create a new document in Studio Max. And you're going to just go into this little tab here and import. You'll find your DXF. And it's going to prompt you with this, and there are a couple things you want to pay attention to in this. Um, the incoming units, if you haven't been working in the appropriate units in your model and you know that you're going to be working with heat, um, you want to make sure that you set that appropriately in here. In this case, we have been working um, in heat in Rhino, so it's 40 by 80 by 34. Everything is roughly all right. If you aren't and you need, know you need to rescale that, you can do that here. I highly recommend doing that. This is, um, enables you to be very precise about your rescaling. Okay. Uh, the second thing you need to pay attention to is the derived AutoCAD primitives. It's going to be by default like layer blocks and no hierarchy. What you want to do is uh, set this by layer. And what this is going to do is, if we hop back into Rhino, it's going to turn each one of these layers into an object in Studio Max, which is um, really, really nice as we uh, start to get into um, dialoguing this because what we want is, I've separated this uh, by material, 
So each one of the columns, floor plates, ceiling, roofs, floors, walks, each one of these things has the potential to be its own material um, in Studio Max here. So we want to make sure we set that to layer. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see down here it's dialoging with well, I know it's importing the CAD file. And now we are going to head and set that up. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit the zoom extents on here and just orbit out. So you can see our guys uh, set up in here. Now what we can do uh, in Studio Max, uh, if we look at just take a brief two seconds here to go through the interface, our selection tools are right here. Some general modeling tools, move, rotate, and scale are over here. And then our modify panel panels over here. Um, Studio Max is an animation software. All of the animation toolbars are located down at the bottom here. Uh, and then the viewport editing toolbars are down here on the right hand side. Bottom right hand corner actually. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and there's two different types of selection tools that we can use. We can select by objects, so we can grab something in the model. Uh, and that's kind of clunky, uh, as you guys will quick, pretty quickly discover. Uh, the really cool feature in this is that we can also select by name. And what this has done, because of the way that we've imported this, each one of those layers is now an object that we can select. And because we've very tactfully named each one of those layers something specific, curtain wall glazing, we can now select all the glazing all at once without uh, creating any kinds of problems. And that's really, really handy because then when we want to start to go out and apply materials, say we can press M for material. And I've already loaded a glass thing and I'll cover how to do that in the next tutorial. But we can then take that and apply that to the object. And you can see that that updates immediately in here. And so we can very, very, very quickly start to uh, get in here and, and load things up really easily and selecting things. Uh, this is going to take a lot of stress off of um, getting the, the rendering model up and running very quickly. Okay, uh, and then the one thing I did, uh, I previously left out was the partition wall is not loaded into our rendering model, which is uh, obviously not going to work. We're going to need that in here. And so um, one thing we're going to be able to look at with this is um, as long as you are maintaining the location of your geometries, um, that is, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll just hide the building now. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the serpentine wall. I'll set that at the, active, the partition wall as the active layer. I forgot when I was going through and doing all my modeling to, to set this up in here, or I've uploaded or changed some geometry for my rendering, and I need to update this. So my partition wall now needs to um, be reinserted or be inserted as I'm going to set this up. So what I can do now, because of the way those modeling softwares talk to each other, I can just export this as its own thing and call this partition for max. Hit save. And using the same schemes, what will end up happening is I can then come in here and import this. I'm going to go through the same series of prompts. Here. All right, and I can go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to merge that into the scene in the exact location that it was modeled in in Rhino. So I don't have to relocate, and I, everything is exactly as I wanted it, and it's set up perfectly in here. So we don't have to do or stress about uh, a bunch of all, all this stuff and making sure this stuff is uh, set up properly. And that works really well, because, and again, we can come in here, we can select those objects uh, accordingly, and we can go ahead and insert that stuff and modify that. Say we, we decide that we want to delete this, and we make some modifications to our model in Rhino. We can delete this out and reinsert it into the model space without having to worry about having to relocate it in a specific space. Okay, uh, and so that's essentially how you guys are going to bring your model into Studio Max.